we're comparing the motion of charged particles in electric fields versus magnetic fields. Let's start with similarities. The direction of the force, whether it's electric forces or magnetic forces, depends on the nature of the charge. So that means whether the charge is positive or negative. Now remember, in the electric field, if you have a positive charge, the force will be always directed towards the negatively charged plate. Conversely, if your charge is negative, then the force will be directed towards the positive plate. As for the magnetic force, we can determine the direction of the force using our right hand palm rule. The magnitude of force also is proportional to the magnitude of charge. So that means if the particle has a larger charge, the magnitude of the electric force and the magnetic force are both greater. The magnitude is also directly proportional to the field strength, whether it is E, the electric field strength, or B, the magnetic field strength. So in simpler words, stronger the field strength, greater the force it will be exerted upon on the particle. When it comes to analyzing these forces for charged particles inside electric fields and magnetic fields, both electric forces and magnetic forces are greater or larger than gravitational forces. In other words, gravitational forces are usually negligible when compared with the strength of the electric forces and the magnetic forces. The main reason for this is that most of the charged particles that we'll be dealing with that's inside an electric field or a magnetic field are extremely small for the masses. For example, the mass of a proton and the mass of an electron are extremely small so that the gravitational forces acting on them will also be quite small. What about differences? Let's start with the type of force. So obviously, the origin of the two forces come from different types of fields. The electric force comes from the electric field, which is usually generated by a pair of parallel metal plates connected to a potential difference, and a magnetic force is produced by an external magnetic field acting on a moving charged particle. The second difference is perhaps the most important. A stationary particle, that is when the velocity is zero, it will experience a force inside an electric field but will not experience any forces inside a magnetic field. It is very important for you to remember that a magnetic field can only exert forces on moving charged particles. You can remember this by referring to the equation where the magnetic force is dependent on the velocity of the charged particle. If the velocity is zero, then the magnitude of this magnetic force will also become zero. So magnetic forces are only present for moving charges and not stationary particles. Furthermore, the type of motion that you will observe will be different for a particle inside an electric field versus a magnetic field. We can break down the type of motion depending on what the velocity of the particle is in relation to the direction of the field lines. Inside an electric field, when a particle enters the field at a perpendicular angle, it will be acted upon by a force that's perpendicular to its velocity. So in this case, the force due to the electric field is pointing downwards. And as a result, the charged particle will undergo projectile motion. I talk more about projectile motion inside electric field in its own module video. Since the magnitude of electric force only depends on the charge of the particle and the electric field strength, if both of these variables remain constant, the charged particle will also experience constant acceleration. In contrast, inside a magnetic field, if the velocity of the charged particle is perpendicular to the field lines, it will undergo uniform circular motion, and again with constant centripetal acceleration. If the velocity is parallel to the field lines, inside an electric field, the charged particle will undergo linear motion with constant acceleration. Inside a magnetic field, the charged particle will also undergo linear motion, but this time with no acceleration. This is because the magnitude of magnetic force is given by QVB sine theta, where the angle theta is the angle between the velocity vector and also the magnetic field lines. If the velocity is parallel to the field lines, the angle here will be zero. Sine zero degrees will give you a value of zero, and that's the reason why 
the charged particle will not have any forces acting on it and therefore an acceleration of zero. If the charged particle is not moving, it will undergo also a linear motion with constant acceleration inside the electric field. And this is because the nature of the electric force does not depend on the velocity of the charge. In contrast, inside a magnetic field, the magnetic force depends on QVB sine theta. If the charge is not moving, its velocity is zero, which will result in a magnetic force of zero as well. This concludes the video on motion of a charged particle in electric versus magnetic fields.